Thank you. So, hello, um, I'm Valentin Chenomas um, from Sopra Stereo. Sopra Stereo is CC, Sopra Stereo Consulting, the most things is consulting, but I'm from the unit uh, we make products as um, add-ons for SAP, so we write our products in ABAP. And um, the um, last years, our main point was the products for uh, IFRS, International Finance Reporting, and uh, this means we have a lot of calculations, a lot of posting into SAP FI, SAP CO, and uh, this need to be tested, which is a big problem in the SAP world, in the on-premise world. Um, so we have first done what everyone do, we have tested manually. So, and um, after some time, our customers said uh, always, why some coding does not work, it worked yesterday, and now the new version does not work. And the next one, it works again, and after them again. So, we have thought about automation, how to automate our processes in testing, and um, we have looked into the world, there are a lot of software for testing inside of SAP, and also outside from SAP, and uh, at the end, we had a lot of requirements to test, and we thought that there's no possibility to um, solve our problems with a standard software, so we have written our own. Um, we have written software in ABAP to solve these problems, so I would like to uh, share our experience, what were the problems, what we have tried to solve, and how we, will, uh, how we, uh, how we solve these problems. So at the beginning, I will explain the requirements, we have a set of requirements for the test tool. We have uh, defined them and then it was a big search to the, for, for the tool, which, which one can do this. And then we have uh, created our own test easy called our software. And uh, how we solve this and what is the test easy, I explain after them. So the first, first point was the step. Do we test Faza manually or should we make an automation? So even after architects have already defined to make an automation testing, other people said manual is better. Uh, you need to understand our testers are not developers. So our testers know the functionality, they know the standards, but they cannot script, they cannot write ABAP or something else, it's just normal people. So, um, the explanation is always the same. If we just make a test, you have here as example, one test is, uh, has some costs and uh, we make a manual run and it's done. But if I would like to try to automate this, the automation is first I need to prepare. I need to, I'm not talking about installation of the test system. You need to prepare, <coughs> you need to make scripts uh, because if you just record your tests with some software, it can be CBDA or it can be external one. If you record your test, you need to prepare every step. If you make a mistake while recording, you record your mistake. So that's why you need some preparation. After them, you need at least the same time you need for the testing itself. Because you need to put the same values into while recording or while configuration, all the data you need to put in. After them, you need to uh, make some, some post-editing. As a person, if you try to test, you just start a transaction, you enter the data, you see the again, for example, you're posting an FE document, FI document, and you see the result, the result is document 22 is posted. So you need a letter, uh, you need some paper, 
you write 22 and then you go to another transaction to check whether it's okay or not. But your software cannot take a paper. So you need to define this special step additionally. So you have more work and after such work, after make pre-editing, edit data and post-edit, you make your real run. So the time you need to test is first, is always longer. Um, whatever software you use. That's why most people say, oh, manual test is better, we are uh, quicker, we uh, can do everything <coughs> manually, we do not need to explain something, everything is done. After the first effect, we see, okay, uh, I need to make my manual test again. It is the whole time for the whole test, but you, my automatic run is only part. And if you do, if you have some defects and you need to test and test again, then you can say, okay, maybe in this case, the sum of my automation is now, I, ha I have now a uh, return of investment. But if someone says automatical test is directly a win, it's, it's uh, not a true. So you need some time to amortize these changes. You need to prepare and you need to know that after some tests, you will have a win. So, but in our case, we have seen we cannot test manually. It is too much, too much calculation, too much combinations we need to test. And that's why we have decided, okay, we do it on the automation way. So now, which requirements do we need? So the first point is regression test. Everyone knows what is a regression test, but I think no one knows it exactly what is it. Um, just as an example, you have a release of a software with some features. Maybe it's your custom development. Maybe uh, it's just an update uh, of the SAP. And you have, for example, 100 euro costs to check this, uh, to, to test this feature. Now you have it tested, it's, everything is okay. After some months, you have a new release. So theoretically, you need to test what you have tested before, whether it's still okay, and the new features you have. After the next release, you have much more. But if you ask people whether they test really all the old stuff, then some people will say, yes, we test it really. But in this case, you will have longer and longer test, uh, uh, test stages. And somewhere you have a test stage that is the whole time. So that's why uh, most people say, okay, we do not need to test it, it's, it's okay, it will, it will run somehow. So that's why we test only the new ones. So the first uh, uh, requirement from our side was, as a product uh, developer, we need a software which can define these new cases and then use them in the regression. I do not need to make such tests manually because I have already automated here. So the software should do this. And the second point is, if you have already tried some test software, you have recorded your UI, for example, and after some changes, your test does not work because you have shifted some field or you have uh, renamed the field. And that's why the software does, just does not work. So in this case, we would like to have a software that can adapt these changes automatically. <laughs> if we can do this, then we will get this regression test for zero cost. It will work, just work. So we only need to talk about new, really new features in the release. <clears throat> this was where our first requirements and we have started to look for the software, but we have also defined agile test. Um, Agile. The word, the word agile is uh, used today for everything. Uh, and uh, also like a regression test, no one knows what it really means. Um, that's why here as an example, this is a standard or this is a convenient testing. Um, we are using here the principle of rule of 10. Uh, if you are in the development first and you develop some software and the developer see uh, something is wrong on the conception, uh, on, the, on, the, on the definition, the developer can just change this and you will uh, correct your error, your defect uh, for 
here uh, <coughs> one euro, say one euro. So if you if the developer is already done and make some development test, and normally what is a development test? No one used in SAP really unit tests. It's there, but I know no one using this in the old world. For the new things where we have already on HANA so something like mocking of database or something like this, you can use this. But in the old world, no one had already used unit tests. So what do the developer? Write some program which do something, uh, which creates some uh, synthetic data which is not real and does not really work. And after them, the developer says it's okay. So my, my code working on my side. Please test in your test system, but my system works. So in real, if the developer see here some error, then this error is some expensive, more expensive than here. Because in the development, the developer has already used the time resources. The time is already away, and now he needs to correct again. So he needs to go back and to test again. So the next point is the developer says, I'm done, gives to the uh, functional testing, and functional testing takes integration, so more more uh, processes, and somewhere inside is a new feature. And if you have an error here, then you need to go back to the development and develop again and make a development test. So that's why here is more expensive. And then there's a regression test if you have one. If you implement something and this is working here, but after them you have broken something else. So this development, something else doesn't work. So you have a problem here in a regression test, and this is in the convenient uh, conventional testing is too late. So that's why you have here really big cost, and some people have errors in the live uh, environment, you know. <laughs> so uh, if you have it here, it's really, really uh, expensive. So the question is, how can we change this? With a good software, theoretically, you can build your world this way. Why do you need development testing as this writing of the, of the development report if you can just make integration testing directly, automatically? And why do you need to wait with uh, integration testing if you can define your integration test and make it together with the developer? Uh, we are here on the test-driven development. We have heard about this at the beginning. So if you just at the beginning have your test defined and you have a tool which allows you to define tests as a whole integration process while development, you do not need to wait and the developer can just uh, uh, test the, the own coding with this integration test. But the point is, it must be possible to create such tests and the second one, integration test does not need to run hours it should run seconds. So if you do this and you have requirement one and two from the previ previous uh, slide, then you can directly start regression tests because you have already automated here. So regression test is just starts a whole test library. So after them, you can directly go live. For us as a product developer, this is really important. Our tests is, are running every night. So we are starting every night, and the next day we know, can we deliver or not? So, uh, but for this, uh, this is a requirement. The software needs to allow this agile. So why do I call it agile? Because agile, call, agile means fast fail. We would like to fail directly, to correct directly, and to go further. We don't want to wait for real life. We want to make it directly, and every night, we want to see the error, or every morning we want to see the error. So the next point is performance. Um, many people think you can just test performance by duplicate, duplicating of data. So you have your CSV file, you copy your line 100,000 times, and then you send it to the system and check whether the system can handle it or not. But the point is that depending of your code, if you have same line, maybe your code in the first step just aggregate them. And the next step is just for the one line. So that's why if you would like to check whole process for the performance and not only the input, you need something like 
differentiating in elements of your data. And for this, you need some generators. You can generate synthetic data. So you need uh, some rule-based generators, which says, OK, this is my pattern. And then I permutate data. Uh, so I have different accounts, different profit center, different cost center, different something. So, so I can check combination. So if you try to make such combinations manually, then the combinatorics is uh, exponentially growing, and then you cannot do it manually at all. So most people say, OK, we test with it just manually. Excel, copy, test, done. But, but this is not really test. So and for this, we need a software. So it's just requirement again. We need software which can generate combination, combination. So we can check the whole process. And at the end of the process, we, have still, we still have combinations. Next point is subspecific. So this point is for everything, for Java, for all the languages. But the subspecific is that there's a theory in a practice. So in the theory, there's a theory of test pyramid. And the theory says the most thing is unit tests. Every uh, developer writes unit tests and checks the units. So what you cannot do with the old ABAP, because the smallest functionality will read the whole customizing and uh, will try to access thousands of database uh, tables. So you cannot do in the old ABAP, or is it very complex? So the next point is you have some internal API, which you can test. The, it's very really quick. And you have a parts of business functionality you can test. So the next point is an external API. You need to check whether you are your connections to the external systems or connections uh, between modules <coughs> work somewhere. So this can be done uh, by calling this APIs and uh, uh, requesting the answer. So, and the unit test is only uh, in the UI tests are only a part of the function of the testing. Um, the most of them should be user acceptance test and maybe testing of whether your UI works at all, because the business functionality should not be implemented in the UI. It should be implemented in, in, the, in the business layer. What do we have in SAP? Ah, oh, okay. But again, why, why it's so? Because the, the unit test is uh, normally very quick, and the UI test is very uh, ah, okay. It's, it's, uh, UI test is standing. They, they are not really, really uh, running. Um, for one UI test, uh, you use 10 seconds, one test. For example, just to uh, create an, uh, a posting document for SAP FI. And for the same functionality on the Already, already on the level of the API, you need 0 0.01 seconds. So that's just to, to, to example, if you want to have 1,000 tests, what, what can you do? So the SAP world, it looks like so. This is a unit test, <laughs> if exists. So the next point is there are some external, internal, there's no internal tests. No one tests internal API. Uh, external API, there are some tests where there's an API works at all. So some people just call some uh, APIs by IDOCs or by uh, calling API from the other system. Uh, and then they say the other system can only this demo data, no other data. Please check it from UI. And then the whole part is over the UI. You are trying all the processes over the UI. And this is a standard testing in SAP. So, but this is quick and this is not really quick. Uh, so the Next requirement is we need, a, we, we need to turn it upside down. We, it should not uh, uh, be on the head. This pyramid is in another form, so please do it so. And uh, for this, you need a special software. So the next point is the complex data validation. Um, so if we uh, look at, at the example with a FI document, if I try to post it in a FI document, I have some input, and um, I give my accounts, uh, uh, my debit credit uh, uh, values, and then I have some result. The result normally is document 22 is posted. 
So the question is, what have I tested? Or why did I test it? This is, is it really posted? Is it just a message? And in real, in the system, there's nothing. So I need to take this information and not only check that there is an element, I need to take this ID, the 22, and check on the DB whether there's really a document. Is it really stored? So, and maybe there is an error. So on the first, on the first, uh, um, uh, on the, if you look at, at the first, we see everything is okay. Transaction says this is okay, but it's not okay. So the next is more complex. You are give some input data and get, for example, you create an uh, SD document and you get a calculation of prices. And now you would like to check this calculation. As a person, you just see, oh, okay, this price is okay, and this is okay, and this is not. But if you do it automatically, you need to say, okay, I select this price and check it. So, for example, here I select one and uh, check whether it's okay. But if you select it just on the live recording, then the recorder selects first line. On the next release, maybe you have this line, not the first line, but as a second line. And then you check the wrong line. So you need to recreate all your tests. So it should be possible, so the software should be able to work with such table data and to say, okay, there's a difference. I have different, different checks for different groups. So I have here one group with a check, and here have a, I have another group with a check. So this grouping should be a logical grouping, because uh, the half of the functionality is a table-based functionality. I have I have uh, several lines, and I need to select the correct one. So it will, should be able the software should be able to to work with tables. Um, so the next one, tear down. Um, what you are doing as a person normally, you just look an example for testing, and on this example you make some posting maybe. But for the software, the software do just what you say. If you say, please uh, create a uh, document in controlling for 10 euro, then it says 10 euro. And if you say five, then it's five. So if you check, for example, the sum after them, you have 15. So this was a run one. Everything okay. I just start it again. So start it again. 10 euro. Okay, I have 10. 5 euro. I have 5. The result is wrong because I have not cleared before what what I had before. So the software need to have a functionality or to provide a functionality to allow tear down, to allow clean up of the system after I have checked somehow. So I, it is possible in the SAP system to make a uh, client copy. Okay, yeah, I can, I can recopy my, my client every time, but it takes time. So it's better if software can do some work and clean up. So we need a software with a clean up. Um, next point I have already said. <coughs> Scripting or not scripting? Many developers will say we will script, we will script all the tests, we will write it in ABAP or we will do it in ECAD, for example, in ECAD scripting. Um, the big question is how it works really in a, in, a, in a whole process. There's a tester which knows the functionality. He says, okay, I would like to test this new functionality, this is my definition. And the Developer need a test specification to script this definition. In our case, as I already said, our tester cannot script, they cannot program, they can only the functionality. So they say, please write some script. So the developer writes script. But the question is who checks the script? Whether the script do the correct thing. So we need to test the test. So uh, developer will check it by himself first, and then they would sit together and check it again. And my question is, who pays for this? This is just additional time, which is not needed, and can be solved by Visivik. What you see is what you get. 
Test definition is done by tester, and then the tester just configures everything. In this case, tester does not need a developer. Tester just configures the test with all the validation, uh, like recording or like another another uh, uh, possibility. But this should be. In this case, this, uh, uh, our our requirement is: I would like not to script. So with this requirement, we have started the analyzer, uh, analyzing of the market. We have said, okay, uh, here's, uh, here are some software, not everything, but here's some software. We have on the one side, we have our requirements. On, on the other side, we have a technical points for this. Um, we need to test in uh, uh, SAP GUI, uh, we need to test in web browser, for example, for Fiori. Uh, but we need also internal tests for the, uh, for example, internal API. We need to call internal function modules. We need to check background jobs. For the uh, units, we need to uh, test class methods if we are talking about unit tests. And we need uh, synthetic data generation. So, and then we have analyzed the market. And it was not very nice because at the beginning we see, okay, the most software can subgui. Um, okay, Selenium by itself cannot sub -GUI. there's some module additionally from some how, but I don't think it works really. It's, it's a problem. It's, 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 there's a plugin, uh, but yeah, okay. <laughs> so for a browser test, uh, we have uh, also analyzed. So the tools which are on the market can do nearly everything you need for the browser and sub -GUI. So you will find the tool, but the next point was internal function modules. And no one can do it without script. The uh, software which comes from outside and uh, can only access from outside cannot check anything. So, and uh, um, SAP software can only be scripted. So I need to script to call uh, normally with, 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 with normal checks that I need, I need real script to script. So background jobs is the same. Class method is the same. And on the synthetic data generation, um, there is some software, for example, MicroFocus can uh, generate synthetic data, but separately from test, not directly while the test. It, I need to generate and then take it and use it in the test. It's not very convenient. Some software like Panaya, Tosca, they can gather data. So I can uh, start something in background and I gather the uh, data already typed by, by user. So I can use it again, but if you have a new functionality, you have nothing to cover. So uh, you can you can do it only in productive system. So all you can do it with code. And our question was, okay, we have our products and we need to test them. And how how should we test this? So the first decision was, we write own software to test this part, because no software can this, and we need to solve this pro the problem. So and the next point is what what should we do with this here? And we just said we integrate what SAP already have. So we integrate ECAT for Sabui and CBTA for all the web applications because it's just the easiest way to test SAP uh, UI. So, so what is the real difference between uh, our solution and uh, other solutions? So, as I already said, external tools access SAP as a black box. They see only the, the API. There's nothing, uh, they, they cannot see what is inside. So, and uh, we have just written an ABAP, and uh, that's why test easy is inside of the SAP NetWeaver, regardless whether it's as for HANA or the old ERP, and can just access the same API, or, or the ECAT CBTA can access the GUI and Fiori. And next, we have just access to everything what is accessible from ABAP. Um, classes, uh, background jobs. Uh, we can directly make batch input. Batch input in background is a very interesting thing. Many, many transactions are old transactions and can be started with batch input. And if you uh, are in ABAP, you can start batch input in background. And then the runtime of such testing of, for example, FB01 or some uh, SD transactions is only milliseconds because it has no, no round trips with the, with the GUI. It is just started in the background and running the same. 
So we can access the file system on the server, um, regardless whether it's uh, open to our uh, to outside or not, because we are in Harbor, we can just just access, and we can access the database um, just by selecting. So we have a data modeler for this, uh, so you can uh, access database uh, without writing code. We can uh, um, we can control the coverage analyzer to check. I don't know whether coverage analyzer is known. Uh, um, maybe the new <laughs> we had another coverage analyzer is a an, uh, tool uh, which shows which code was really tested. So if you you are starting running code and then you look was the code really really used or not, so the developer or the architect can after them say. Um, you have tests, but the test <coughs> tests only the half of code. What is was another half? Please make additional tests to test this and this and this case. Um, so we can control, we can access the box model, we can access the CDS views uh, and read from the debate over the CDS view. So from our perspective, since this is written in ABAP, we can see everything in the SAP, so the SAP system is transparent for the code tester. Questions? <laughs> that was really quick. Seven, seven minutes. Do you have some questions to this kind of testing? No. Thank you. How does it work? How does it work? Um, this is just easy. Uh, test easy is just easy. Um, we have uh, used uh, uh, configuration for this. So we we just uh, if I for example would like to check a function module, I do the same. As the first I do the same as the eCard. We just read the uh, or the RTTI. We read the interface of the function module. And we just show with descriptions, with everything, with F4 helps. We just show the structure of the functional module. And you can configure with data, and we have some, uh, you can configure it without coding. So and you can combine steps. It's, it's a little bit like eCard, but it's extended. And we can do it with all the objects. We can uh, look into the program, which, which, for example, for a report, we can uh, read from the report which parameter are there, we can read the result, the, the spool, if you have a background job, and look into the spool uh, with uh, patterns uh, uh, just to, to see the, the numbers. We can start uh, transactions, we can record uh, using batch input, and then replace this. It's just uh, normal implementation which can do. In ABAP, we have gathered everything to, together in a product. And after then, we make all the validation rules just by checking with your validations, it's not a magic. It's just combined everything. What is it? In, what what already there is, and what SAP uh, allows into one product. So how long was the development time? Oh. Development time of the product. Oh. Yeah. We have developed this parallelly to uh, uh, to the development of the other products. So. I don't know, year or two, one person year or two, something like this was developed parallelly because this was not the main point. Uh, now we can sell this, but uh, at the beginning it was just for testing our other products. So, if you need information, I have here something in German and English. <laughs> Thank you very much.